This is a video on utility tokens, the third of seven types of crypto assets. First, a review. A crypto asset is a digital asset that uses cryptography, a peer-to-peer -peer network, and a public ledger to do three things. To regulate the creation of new supply, to verify transactions, and to secure these transactions without any middleman. Utility tokens, or app coins, are a way for a distributed application to raise funds. One of the first projects to hold a crowd sale for utility tokens was Augur. Augur is a prediction market designed to harness the wisdom of crowds in order to make markets in virtually anything. To us, Augur showed the potential power of blockchain technology. We dubbed the crowd sale at the time a blockchain IPO, but the stickier term was Initial Coin Offering, or ICO. It's a bit of a misnomer, but the sale was a sign of things to come. In 2016, roughly $165 million was raised in ICOs. That was interesting, but not really enough to raise eyebrows outside of the blockchain community. But by 2017, the figure had reached at least $3 billion, perhaps as much as $7 billion. Ethereum's co-founder, Joe Lubin, believes this new fundraising model is democratizing the ability for projects to fund themselves. A distributed application like Augur can sell utility tokens, giving consumers access to services or access to scarce resources. Or a dApp can sell security tokens, which we'll cover in the next section. Augur's native token is not equity per se, but a utility token that users need in order to interact with the network or the application. Basically, Lubin says, a dApp crowd sale is pre-selling something and using those proceeds to build what you need or to take a project from a rudimentary stage to a more sophisticated stage. Utility tokens can have applications in virtually every industry. Most ICOs in 2017 and 2018 were classified as utility tokens. Consider Gollum, a decentralized alternative to today's centralized clouds, which are run by giants like Amazon and Apple. Gollum aims to use the power of billions of devices to distribute computation, but for its model to work, it needs an incentive for us all to participate. So in 2017, Gollum issued a utility token, which allows users to pay and get paid on its platform. Now, if Gollum works, it could potentially disrupt cloud computing as we know it today, a massive multi-billion dollar industry. Another example is Sweetbridge. It originated the concept of a discount token. Users get a monthly discount on goods and services as long as they hold the token in a Sweetbridge wallet. As more customers use the network, these tokens increase in value, or so says Sweetbridge's Scott Nelson, the CEO. Customer value drives the business instead of shareholder value. Utility tokens are usually not standalone blockchains. They typically run on top of platforms like Ethereum, ICON, or EOS. The distinction between utility tokens and the underlying platform tokens can be a subtle one. After all, protocol tokens also have utility, like the Ether that's used to pay transaction fees on the Ethereum network. Filecoin, a distributed file sharing system, had its own ICO in the summer of 2017. On Filecoin, developers will be able to build any number of applications on the open network. So Filecoin is a bit of an exception. But we believe most utility tokens will run on networks like Ethereum. Up next, security tokens. Please head over to the discussion forums if you have any questions or comments.